Hi guys, welcome to my talk on rocket fuel, making hydrogen from home. Um, I'm going to be talking today firstly about a bit of rocket science and rocket fuel and that sort of thing. I'm going to talk about that for a little while at the start and then I'm going to move into doing a demonstration where you guys can make your hydrogen at home. So to do the experiment you're going to need these things at the bottom here. We're going to come back to those in a moment but because we're going to talk for a little while first you have a second to gather everything together and then we can do it together. So I'm going to start off firstly by talking, oh, finish the next one, talking a little bit about myself. So I, unlike the other speakers, don't actually do astronomy or astrophysics, but I really love talking about it. So I'm a science communicator. Um, so that's what I've actually studied and it's what I do professionally. And I really love talking to people about the stars and about rockets and I think rockets are really great fun. So you can see me on the left there talking about how we do spectroscopy. Um, there's been some talks about that in the past so go back through and check them out and then at the top it's a rocket launcher that I made at home. So rockets are this really great thing that everyone can do together I think in terms of science and it's something that um, I get really excited about when I talk to people about. So what I'm going to do in this talk the first thing I'm going to do is talk to you about what is rocket fuel and then at the end I'm going to take some questions but I really encourage you to ask questions throughout the talk and um, then they'll come up and I can answer them either as we go through or answer them at the end. Then I'm going to do the experiment live in front of your eyes and at the end um, and all throughout it ask questions, send in troubleshooting um, and we'll try and work through it together and join in in that way and I'd really encourage you if you build it along with me to post a picture in the comments and everyone can see what you've done. I'll be posting my picture and I'll take questions all throughout that so ask your questions anytime. Oh there it is and yeah post your results. The other thing is please make sure you have a supervisor with you for this experiment. It can get a bit fiddly and it involves a little bit of an electric current, a little one, so make sure you have a responsible adult with you for this experiment. So what are we going to need? The first thing you're going to need is some aluminium foil. This is going to be um, the, the, going to help us with the batteries to kickstart um, the reaction we're going to do. You want to get a clear container. This one's mine. It's not too big, um, but deep enough that um, we can put the aluminium foil in it. Get some plastic cutlery so you can um, put it along the top of your container. Um, it doesn't have to be cutlery necessarily. Um, wooden chopsticks or plastic chopsticks will work just as long as something you can prop on the top and that is not metal is the main thing. So some plastic knives or something is perfect there. Get yourself some sticky tape, some salt and some dishwashing liquid. You don't have to have the dishwashing liquid but it can be really cool if you have it. And yeah, so the final product is going to look like this, just to give you an idea. I'd really encourage you to get um, a few batteries, AA batteries preferably, but not more than four. One is probably not enough, but um, three or four is a great amount, not more than four, or you might get a zap and that would be sad for everyone. <laughs> so let's talk about rockets. So getting off the earth is actually really difficult and there's a few reasons why that is. The first reason is gravity pulls us down. The closer you are to Earth, the more gravity you feel, and it can be a bit of a struggle to launch up and away from gravity. And the more weight you have on the ship, the harder it's gonna to be to beat gravity. So you think, well, you know, if it's so hard to beat gravity, we'll just put more fuel in and we'll get a bigger rocket. But the more weight you add through things like rocket, and fuel, the harder it's going to be to beat gravity. The second thing is that getting through the atmosphere can be really bumpy. It's a bit like if you've ever been on a plane and they tell you to put your seatbelts on because there's going to be some turbulence and it's the most extreme form of turbulence you can imagine on a rocket and they're strapped really tightly in. But what that means for our rocket fuel is it's not something that can be very unsta unstable. It has to be something that doesn't get bothered by a lot of heat in the atmosphere and something that's not going to be bothered by a lot of bumpiness. So that's that's the reason why getting off Earth can be hard and why we have to really think when we're designing rockets and rocket fuel. We've got two kinds of rockets that we're going to use to get off Earth. The first one is solid 
a solid fuel in like a solid rocket. So once this fuel is ignited, it's just going to go and go and go. You can't turn it down or use it to do things like thrust or steer because it's going to just like keep on going once you've ignited it. The second type of rocket then is a liquid rocket. So you've got much more control over this type of fuel. You have, um, you're able to actually use this liquid rocket to um, control the speed of the rocket ship and even turn the rockets on and off completely. So the two main ingredients then of liquid fuel are hydrogen and oxygen. And that's what we're going to be making today. So that's lots of fun. So two kinds of, of rocket fuel then. So what about hydrogen and oxygen? So hydrogen is great because it's really, really light. It's the lightest molecule on Earth and it burns really intensely. So over 3000 degrees Celsius. And it's going to be very, very hot for that reason. And as it burns and explodes, it's gonna create a lot of energy that's gonna push our rocket along. Um, it's actually hydrogen, so um, explosive and so um, bright in its explosion that um, an example of it is in the sun and in stars. And if you go back and have a look, Georgie's talk last week talked about how intensely bright and fiery things like uh, stars and supernova can burn. And they're also made of hydrogen. So that's why we're gonna use hydrogen in our rocket. The second thing is oxygen. Now, remember we said that hydrogen is so powerful when it burns, but this is called a combustion reaction and you need something else in a combustion reaction. So planes also use combustion reactions, but they are burning fuel to create energy as well that pushes them along, just like a rocket. But in order to burn fuel, the second thing you need is oxygen. And um, the plane luckily can get that oxygen from the air. So our air in our atmosphere provides the fuel with the, the spark it needs to kind of ignite and burn a lot. So it can draw in air from the atmosphere. Space, as you might know, is in a vacuum. That's why we can't necessarily hear things very well in space and why, you know, all sorts of freaky things can happen when you um, go out into space in terms of pressure. But what that means is that there's no air and there's no oxygen to burn. So when we ignite the rocket, we need to get that oxygen from somewhere else to get that burning combustion reaction. So we actually need to send that oxygen with them um, on the rocket and it draws it in from the cylinders. So if we go back to those two kinds of fuel, actually we need rockets um, with oxygen for both solid and liquid rockets, um, which is an important thing to know because we cannot get that oxygen once we're in space. So how does a rocket work? So simply our liquid rockets are gonna work by burning hydrogen fuel with the oxygen in a high pressure chamber and we can see it here at the end on the right and we've got the hydrogen fuel in one area the oxygen in another they're going to combine in a reaction and bang it comes out the end in my very explosive diagram here and um, the direct exhaust out of the nozzle is going to propel the rocket along so we're about halfway now so if you've got any questions ask them now and we can answer them toward the end and there's the rocket being propelled along by the, the energy of the exhaust. So now you must be looking at um, a lot of these rockets and the kind of trails that they're creating and thinking like, wow, this must be pretty terrible for the environment <laughs> and um, climate change and stuff like that. Look at all this explosion and this burning and um, you know, the planet must be pretty sad, but actually not so much because when we have a plane and a plane is also burning fuel like we talked about and it's drawing that air in from the atmosphere to burn that fuel the fuel they're burning is not hydrogen it's something called kerosene which is a bit like diesel you guys might put in your car or your truck or your parents maybe if you don't have a car or a truck yet so you might have heard that like a co2 or carbon dioxide or carbon emissions um, this is created when you burn a fuel that is carbon based 
So diesel is made of carbon. So when it burns and it combines with that oxygen that we have in the air, what you're gonna get is carbon dioxide, CO2. And too much of this is what's contributing to climate change and the planet being sad, like we saw in the last slide. But luckily, rockets don't actually use a carbon-based fuel. Rockets, as we've just talked about, use hydrogen combined with oxygen. And when you combine um, carbon, no, sorry, when you combine hydrogen with oxygen, what you get is H2O. H for hydrogen, O for oxygen, so you get water. So actually, when it burns, it's not actually creating those like terrible carbon emissions, it's creating just water, which is like much better for the environment. Rockets aren't totally environmentally friendly. You know, space junk is a growing problem and making the rockets uses a lot of energy. Resources can be difficult to collect and it can be really difficult to recycle the materials in rockets once we've used them. But hydrogen fuel is certainly a way forward and not necessarily bad for the environment, especially compared to something like diesel. So if we've decided, if we've discovered now that water is the product of um, rocket fuel combining with oxygen. Uh, we can make this at home by going the other way. So splitting the water back up into hydrogen and oxygen for fuel. Um, but they're fixed very tightly. As you can see in this diagram here, they're really stuck together. And we need to do something to break up this um, very, very fond band of triplets. And what are we gonna do? we're gonna use electricity to break apart the bonds that are holding water together. So my, why might we actually do this in space? So one of the reasons why we're actually going back to the moon, even though we've already been there and we kind of want to go to Mars, is that before we go to Mars, we have to be able to make sure we have enough fuel to get to Mars. So remember, the more fuel we have, the harder it is to get off Earth and the more expensive it is to push our rocket. Gravity is really hard to beat, and it's expensive. So we know that there's ice on the moon now, and we can see in this diagram here, the North and the South Pole of the moon. The South Pole's on the left and the North Pole's on the right there. And you can see those blue dots are where ice is, and they're in the darkest parts of the moon. So the, the lighter spots are the parts of the room that's the part of the moon that's the warmest, and the dark spots are the coldest. They're in the really cold, dark areas of the moon. And we also know that there's water detected under the surface of the moon. So if we can separate rocket fuel from this ice on the moon, we could potentially use it as a source to kind of fuel up and keep going to Mars and beyond. And that would be really great for us. So this is sort of the last bit we're gonna go through before we start the experiment. So um, if you have any final questions, go now. But what are we going to do to break up water? Electricity breaks water up. So what we're going to need firstly, as we talked about, is water. And that's what we're going to get our fuel from. Then we need to put in some metal. Metal is useful because it's a conductor of electricity. So if you've ever been told by your parents not to put a fork in the toaster, or if you're like um, my mum, you've actually put a fork in a toaster and had something horrible happen to you, um, electricity flows through the metal. And it doesn't flow, flow so well through other things like plastic or wood. So that's why we're going to use electricity. And that's why we're going to be putting our props as not, um, as not metal because you know, we don't want to zap ourselves in our props. So the metal is going to bring the electricity into the water. Then we've got batteries. Batteries are what's going to kick off our current. We're going to have a positive and negative side and connect them together. So we have the flow going through, um, through the metal and into the water. And then the last thing we've got to do is sit and watch the water break up and create our gas bubbles. So the, um, on the one side, we're going to see hydrogen gas coming off, and on the other side, we're going to see oxygen gas coming off. Which one is which, you might ask? You'll have to try it and see, or if you're not going to try it, you can just watch me do it, <laughs> and I'll show you. So, but you said, I said, that we were going to make a liquid rocket, and now we're making gas. Well, you know, I hear you. But, you know, uh, it's kind of complicated. 
So to make hydrogen into a liquid, you're going to need a lot of compression, you're going to need it to be very cold, and you're going to need somewhere to secure and store it. That's not going to leak out once you've created it and made it into a liquid. And that's kind of hard to do from home, much harder than just, you know, separating water. So if you're interested, though, in um, liquid hydrogen into the future, um, hydrogen is being looked at as an alternative fuel for things like planes and cars, because as we talked about, we want to move away from those carbon-based fuels and into one that maybe just makes water instead of carbon emissions. So if you're interested in, you know, liquid fuel, um, that could be a very lucrative career into the future, but unfortunately not today. So um, if there's no questions, uh, we might press on. So. Next up, we're gonna need these things. So we're gonna need the foil, the batteries, the container, the cutlery, sticky tape, salt, and dishwashing liquid. So before we begin, there's a few warnings that we should go through. So make sure you're working in a very well ventilated space. Because we're going to be adding salt to the mixture, a really small amount of chlorine is maybe going to be produced. So you don't want to make your bedroom smell like a pool for the rest of the week. So go to somewhere I'm outside. You don't have to go outside. <laughs> Being in a, like an open plan area is fine, but maybe don't do it in a cupboard. So make sure you disassemble the, the assembly as soon as you're done or leave it in a well-ventilated space outside. If you're not able to leave it outside somewhere where you know your cat's not gonna eat it or your little sibling's gonna knock it over, I have an example of one I've done a few days ago. So you can see what it's like. You're not missing out on anything. But if you're gonna leave it, make sure it's somewhere well-ventilated. Don't do it on a metal bench or a metal sink. As we said, metal conducts electricity. You don't want to zap yourself trying to do your experiment. And avoid touching the foil and avoid touching the water and make sure your hands are dry before we touch all those things. Or you might get a zap. You might not, but you might. So don't do it. And make sure your responsible supervisor is with you to do this. And if you haven't already, get the responsible person. And I'm going to remind you of all of this as we go through. So let's begin so now i'm going to move the camera down so you can see what i'm seeing and this is my workbench move that out of the way so this is what we're going to need uh, here it all is here on the bench my foil i've also got some towels here to make sure my hands are dry nice and safe my container Got my AAA batteries. I'm only using three, but remember maximum of four. And then we've also got our salt over here. So let's begin. Here's my container. The first thing I'm going to do is fill the container with water so it gives the salt a bit of a chance to dissolve. I'm going to jug because it's easier. But water out of the tap is really fine. I'm going to take it off and go a bit faster. Okay. Now we add our salt. Again, table salt, just fine. No brand sponsorship here. But iodized table salt will do fine. And just eyeball black a few tablespoons. And then maybe grab one of your little piece of cutlery, mix it together, and that will dissolve while we do everything else. So move it to the side. If your hands are wet, make sure you dry them because we don't want to combine electricity and water on ourselves, just in the experiment. Okay, I've got my three batteries, double A's. Triple A's will also work if you have a few of them. At a stretch, you could use a nine volt battery, but um, double A's are the best. So four maximum of these, otherwise, you know, increases your chance of getting a zap. So what we're going to do is combine them together in what's called series. So I'm going to use my sticky tape here to stick the batteries together. This might take a second, but I'll hopefully take as long as you, so you don't need to pause it or anything. And we're going to go just like this and really pressing them together as we do that. Because if there's too many gaps, then the electricity won't fall 
flow through. It'll just like get stuck. So here's the first one. I'm going to do another one. All right. And holding them really tight. See me, I'm struggling with the, the effort. You know, this can be a bit fiddly. If you haven't got your parent or guardian, grab them now. They'd be really great to help you with the, with the batteries, especially this next part, which can be a bit fiddly. Now you can see mine are still a bit wobbly. We don't want that. So we're gonna create a bit of a stirrup down here. And what we're gonna do is press down and pull. Pull down here like that. And now that's really secure. As you can see, we don't want much flex at all, if any. So the next thing we're gonna do, just putting our batteries to the side for a second, is grab our foil. Don't need too much foil. Just like this much, it's fine. And what we're going to do is, oh, excuse me, is to connect each end of foil to one end of the battery. So, scrunch it up a bit like this and stick it on. And like the other two, if you can, make sure you get it as tight as possible. So, grabbing the sticky tape. Oh, it's stuck to my fingers. Really pressing it on. Okay, so like the batteries, we don't want a lot of movement here either. So have a look and see if it's wobbling at all, but if it's not, you might want to like to put some sort of around the sides or maybe even underneath. And then we're just going to pull it to the side a little bit. <clears throat> so something we don't want is for this to be touching the other bit of foil. So make make sure you don't touch this bit of foil to the other bit of foil as we do this. So next bit of foil and make sure you're not like clutching both at the same time. Just be careful, you know, try and touch, hold the back. See, I'm just carefully just keeping it away. I'm again like this. And just putting it over like that. If you just bump both of them at the same time, don't worry, but just don't like grab them both at the same time. Okay. Here we go, very secure on one side, very secure on the other side. We've made our little thing now. So what you probably want to do now is just gently, just like open it up a bit. Make sure the foil is, you know, it's all clumped together. We want as much surface area as possible to be in our salty water. And just double check everything's on really securely. Yep, looks good. Now we're going to grab our salty water back. Make sure one last time. You could even add a bit more water, not water, salt if you want it. If you want it to be really salty, make sure you're not using the wet implement. 
Is everything a bit of a dry, 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 dry my hands. Okay. Two, just like this, over the top. Remember, if you don't have knives, you can use cutlery or something. Oh, not cutlery, not metal. Use chopsticks, whatever. And then we're going to put it in here. Mine only just fits, lucky me. And the reaction has begun. And if you have a look down here, you can see it bubbling away. On the left hand side, now, um, the question we've got is, um, how much hydrogen does it take to blow up a safe? Um, like to get money out, I assume? I'm not sure. I think it would depend how robust the safe was, but you can collect this hydrogen if you want. And uh, I wouldn't recommend you have a go, but yes, oh, sorry, I just realized. My left, your right, camera is flipped. So, yes, on the, on the right hand side to you guys, here it is, bubbling away. Now, something you might ask is, I told you that it was going to be hydrogen and oxygen, and you're saying, what? I only see the hydrogen. What's happening on this side? Not much. Well, that's because actually the oxygen that's being created is reacting with the salt in there. And instead of creating oxygen gas, it's creating chlorine gas, which is much yuckier and unfortunately not super useful for the audience. So you might smell a tiny little bit the smell of chlorine, a bit like a swimming pool. Don't stick your face in it. Chlorine's not very good for you, in case you don't know. <laughs> it's usually used to clean things. But um, that's why you're not seeing anything happening on this other side, all the actions going on here. And you'll see it's beginning to rise up. Now, this is the time you might want to add the dish soap if you want to. And you can see some pretty bubbles forming on the top with the dish soap. And yeah, so that's it. And you can see it sticking to all of the, the crevices here where there's the most exposed parts. And there, there you've got your hydrogen. You can collect it and use it to blow up a safe or power your rocket. The choice is yours. So the last thing I kind of wanted to show you, so it's the last thing, so if you've got any final questions about safes or otherwise, you can send them in now, but if not, add them to the comments later and we'll answer them for you, is what happens when you leave it overnight? So fast forward two days, and this is one I prepared earlier. I'm just gonna swap them out here and you can see it's looking very different. So we've got here, we've still got our fork and the batteries. They've been sitting and running. You can see down the bottom here, we've got this disgusting looking white foam. And on the left, it's the foil has become completely tarnished and dark. And on the right, where it was originally the same size, oh sorry, on your right and my left, um, on your right and your left, it's completely gone. Um, it used to be the same size. Now it is much, much smaller. And you can see on top as well, we've got some delightful looking metallic foam. So this is because what we've actually created is an electrolytic cell. And what's happened here is an oxidation reaction has taken place and it's demolished this, this part where the oxygen and the chlorine is being created. And at the bottom, you see that reaction between the aluminium and the salt to create a bit of a foamy deposit here. So 
if um, you want to do that, then that's, that's what it will look like in a few days. Um, we have a question about why does it stick? I'm not sure what it is, but if you're talking about the bubbles, it's because they haven't quite escaped yet. So they're going to cling on until they're able to kind of break that surface tension and rise to the top. So yeah, if there's no more questions, I might just wrap up and let you sit and, and think about your next rocket adventure. You can actually, I'm not sure if it's quiet enough, but you can actually hear the bubbles. So the last thing is when you're done with your cell, if you don't want to leave it overnight like I did, which is totally fair enough, you know, it looks um, a bit disgusting. If you don't want to leave it overnight, then what you can do is just disassemble it straight away. So pull apart the batteries and it's okay to just pour it down the sink. It's only salty water at this stage. So that's fine. If you do want to leave it overnight, make sure you put it in a well-ventilated area somewhere that someone's not going to knock it over or anything like that. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And um, oh yes, and when you're pulling it apart, make sure you don't touch the two metal ends together still. Although you may not have another end, as you saw with mine, to come back to at all. So be careful with that. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it or you can Try it yourself if you didn't watch it, uh, if you weren't able to watch it live um, and do it with me live. But yeah, it was great to have you all join me. And yeah, best of luck. Bye guys. <laughs>